Hello, this is Leah with Scraptastic Patchwork, and today in Scrap Busting 2021, we are tackling a needle book. So I made kind of a big one, but I wanted to get all of my needles and supplies together in one thing so that I can take it anywhere. I didn't used to hand sew a lot, it was just once in a while, maybe if I did a binding on a quilt or in one of my bags that I used to make. This little vintage tin is what all my hand sewing supplies were in. This little pin cushion was glued to the top of this. And so all my needles would just like that. So that was what I had. Well, I wanted to do it in front of the TV or I wanted to do it, um, well, of course it hasn't happened like in the car on a road trip. <laughs> I haven't done that for a while. So, but I want to be able to do that. So I thought a needle case is perfect. And I decided to make my needle case or book out of the scraps from the quilt I used for the slip cover for my hand sewing desk chair. So I thought that was perfect because it's kind of a double scrappy project. Not only was it scraps that I had that I need to use, but it was also from a quilt that was a scrappy quilt to begin with. And then to use those scraps for a scrappy project. So that's what we're gonna do today. All right, before we begin, I wanna show you the one I've made. So as I said, this is kind of big and the one we make today won't be as big. On the front here is just a piece of the flea market mix fabric that I cut out as a label and I machine stitched needles on there. And then I did a lot of zigzag stitches in here just cause I, I think it looks so fun. I added a piece of coffee dyed cheesecloth as a base here. I had some tape measure ribbon that I just kind of put on there, stuck it on there with a little applique. And I have a couple that are now glued in there. <laughs> oh, this one isn't, that's good. Of handmade pins that I got um, from a seller on Etsy, really cute pins. Uh, let me open it up so you can see the back cover at the same time here. On the spine, I put a piece of lace and another piece of that flea market fabric handmade on there. And the binding I chose was a piece of batik. And then on the first page here, what I did is I put my favorite needle right now and my favorite floss that I've been using on a lot of projects. I just kind of pinned it, stuck it in there like this to this little piece of wool. This is a cutoff from those cat cave little cat beds. I had to make the holes bigger because my cats are so huge. I have a 20 pounder about and a 25 pound cat and they they could not fit even in the biggest ones so i had to make the holes bigger so i kept all the felted wool scraps to use in projects these are two of the buttons i made um, just by covering it mod podge uh, with some paper and and distressed it and what that does is it holds down this little flap kind of looks like a tongue <laughs> but this is a piece of felt and this is a piece of wool blanket. First of all, on the inside, another piece of that really cool um, flea market fabric. This now houses all my milliners. And I just tore a piece of the packaging and glued it on there so that I would remember what these were. So all of these are all milliner needles. And inside 
I have a fiber that goes all the way through and that serves as my tie. So I've added uh, just one signature of a piece of craft felt. And so on this first page, I did two little, um, in journaling, they're called belly bands, um, but they're just little, little pieces of the quilt that I stitched down on either side and then left them open through here so that I could do a bunch of clips. Oh, I forgot to say that I put this piece of needlework on here. I just fabric glued that. These are my darner needles, applique, and I made a pocket. And in here is my little thimble. And after I stitched these, then I had these little additional stitch marks and I just made them into flowers with little appliques on there. This piece, this is obviously part of the quilt. This piece is a felted wool as another place to put a bunch of needles. Then I added a couple pockets on this side. This one houses my fabric glue and this is another glue stick and then a tape measure. This is a, a double pocket if I don't have anything, you know, like if I wanted to put this in here and then maybe I wanted to put this behind it, I can do that. So it's just kind of a versatile little tall pocket. But for now, I'm just using it for that big thing and for these. So this one, I added a little piece of lace. I actually just went crazy with some decoration. This does not serve any purpose but just to be pretty. And then on this back page, before a couple snips and also my glasses if I need them. And then my chenille needles go here. And these are the ones I use mostly for embroidery. And then two different kinds of pins. So this pocket was also made with fabric, a piece of the quilt, some fun trim I had. And these pins are the silicone ones that you can iron onto. And then these are my fine pins. Oops, one escaped. Um, that I like to, to attach my really, really fine things onto before I stitch them. And then the back, I just left pretty plain. This is my little needle book. So I'm going to basically follow the ideas for the one we're going to make today. I might change it a little bit and it's definitely not going to be this big. <laughs> It'll be a smaller version, but the construction and some of the elements are going to be exactly the same. As far as materials, though some embroidery thread or regular thread, whatever you'd like to use, some fabric glue, and then some needles, of course, for your hand stitching. Um, I am using this scalloped uh, scissor uh, when I trim my felt. So that's an option. Um, also for this particular little flap that I made right here, I wanted it to have some substance. So I actually covered both sides of this. Um, I will put it right here because I can't remember what it's called, but it's a double sided fusible really stiff interfacing so you might might want to grab a few pieces of that if you'd like that i have some of my coffee dyed cheesecloth that i might add in but any kind of fun different fabrics that you might want to add for a little texture i have fussy cut some of those little elements the fabric ephemera out of that fabric that I used for the slip cover project. Some scrap craft felt or real felt if you have it. And then you want your bases. So as I said, I'm going to be using some scrap quilted um, pieces that I had. 
you can make your own patchwork or you can just use your own solid fabrics. Um, I like to have a little substance to it, so that's why I'm using these quilted pieces, as well as just a ton of vintage things like some rickrack, some more uh, appliques, some little crocheted things, ribbons, um, more applique, vintagey stuff. You might want to think of a theme that you want to do, and I'm not really doing that. I'm just kind of basing it on what I feel looks good with my patchwork here. I have some wool. So this is the felted wool piece. This is uh, the wool blanket. And this is the cutoff from the cat cave. You want to have more scraps to make your pockets or things like that. Let's start with the base. I've picked out my base piece and I've trimmed it. And I believe, let's see, I think it was 11 by almost seven and a half. Let's see, 11 and seven by, I don't know, three eighths, something like that. And I've decided this is going to be my front because I want to put my needle needles label on there and I don't want to lose too much patchwork. So this is a good, a nice bigger piece to cover. And I've picked one of my labels and I'm going to back it with a little bit of scrap batting, maybe a quarter inch smaller than what I've decided. Um, I'm going to fray it a bit and I will sew it on with a zigzag just around leaving some of that fray and this gives it a nice base for when I machine embroider but also it'll poof it out a little bit it'll look kind of nice that way I am I think I want to layer it maybe this side just a little under probably squoosh smoosh it squoosh it squish it what is the word and then i have this little piece of vintage doily that i'm going to put under there too and then um, some of that ribbon tape measure ribbon and i'll probably do the same i'm going to just put it on either side to stabilize it and then i'll kind of do the ribbony swoosh these are all new words I'm making up. Uh, okay, so that's what I kind of thought I would do for the front. But I also want to do some of these vintage Mississippi clam buttons. So I might like maybe put them like this. Have fun just trying things out. I don't know, maybe that. We'll see. I've picked out this color for the felt. And you know, the reason why... We do felt or wool is just because the needles go in and out of it so much nicer and we don't have to worry about fraying um, but I did do the scalloped edge with my little shears here but if you just have a pinking shears that's fine too I, I guess I am gonna kind of do this by a color theme maybe this soft minty green um, and then uh, this peachy pink I think is what the theme is going to be and some neutrals mixed in and then for the back cover i decided to do something too i think i want to put this little guy down girl down i have to decide which side i want this is a vintage thing that i coffee dyed and then maybe part of this fabric behind it to make it pop even more i mean it pops pretty good with the patchwork, but just a tiny little, and I'll cut this down and maybe fray that too. Then we got to think about the closure. And at first I picked this out of my, my, uh, upcycling stuff, but it's kind of, it doesn't have any of the minty green. I mean, that looks good with just this, but that color scheme I went with I don't know. 
So I have this ribbon and I have, I do have this rickrack loop and a button. Do I want to do that? Do it one step at a time. I'm going to speed up the process so you're not bored to death. And uh, then I'll stop after I've done the front cover. I'm also going to probably do all the machine sewing off camera, I think, just to save time. Plus, uh, I apologize for my nails, but I've been also working with ink and stamping, so it's staining my fingernails. So apologize for that. Okay, let's get going. I'm happy with the front you know you, you, it's always difficult to know where to stop <laughs> um, I put these two different laces the pink and the green on here on the spine and what I did was I slow stitched on either side of where the actual middle or where the spine will be and the reason I did that is because when we put this on I'm going to machine stitch right here. So I wanted it to just go right down the spine in the middle of that. So we'll have zigzag down the middle with the slow stitch on either side. I just thought that was fun. If you were making this without quilted patchwork, then you really wouldn't have to worry about your stitches coming through on the other side. You could do all your 
stitching and fabric collage to the outside and then you can put another piece for the inside but since I already have this quilted fabric then I do need to worry about that so some of it I like like I did the original needle book there I kind of incorporated some of the stitching into my design and this I do like this will be fine but on the other side it's kind of not the greatest so I think I want to cover that so now I want to think about what I want to put on these inside covers so I think I want to put the flap here and maybe I'll do a piece of felt with a pocket and what I was thinking about doing is a corner pocket on the back or maybe two corner pockets but if you take say you take a, a five inch square and you fold it on the diagonal that would make a really cute side pocket like that and maybe maybe I can do an additional let's see if I have a little scrap here so I can explain what I mean I actually found that you know my felted wool here I think that is going to work out really cute so if I put that right here in the middle and I'm going to probably blanket stitch this down so I don't go all the way through because I, I want to leave this as it is so I'll just blanket stitch this and maybe the top but I'm going to have this be a pocket so that'll be a pocket and then if you put this down over it maybe I'll put this down a little bit more I wonder if I can get that in the binding we'll see that may be too thick down there that way I have a diagonal pocket and I have this felt piece or wool piece too and you could put pins or needles on this wool and then you can stick your other things in there probably like let's see here's a little rotary cutter that probably could fit over there we'll see after maybe I'll move this over a little bit so then there's more room here and then I'll probably top stitch that somehow maybe zigzag we'll see so I think that's kind of what I'm thinking of since that'll be caught in the binding okay so the other side I don't mind this too much here so I still might I might put some kind of image I have to look at my other ephemeras but I'm probably gonna do my flap right there I may cut it into a different shape so it doesn't look so much like a tongue and then here's another piece of that cat cave so I thought I would just put it right there with um, maybe have it a little bit higher so it fits in there good with a couple more buttons maybe I have to cut a little bit bigger of a piece have it go well maybe that's as wide as I can make it yeah I'll just shape that better so they'll have a couple little buttons right there with my flap and have some kind of decorative piece right there also I want to fit in my handmade somewhere I thought I would stitch it to this little piece of ribbon I think that's so cute well I do have two other pages because we haven't even decorated this yet also I've decided on just a little loop and button that will go on the front here and I will attach this after the binding is on and that'll go under here as well okay 
I am going to start working on probably this guy. to restrain myself and not do any more <laughs> oh this turned out really cute so I made a double pocket again pocket back here pocket here and then I made this a double pocket as well so you can stick something like a a pen or like before it was kind of my model here of size did a, a regular slow stitch here um, and then over here I added some little French knots around the applique a button and this was just a little piece of fringe from an upholstery sample and I added a ribbon onto there and and a couple of my Mississippi vintage buttons and this comes up really, really nice. And then I have another piece of felt under there with some ephemera. And so that can be used for pins or needles as well as all of this space and all of this space. And this, and this. <laughs> So plenty of spaces for needles and pins there. All right, so before we go on to this, I would like to bind this now. And at the same time, I'm going to add, I'm going to add this and the button for the closure. So I think what I'm going to do is... figure out how big I want my thing to be. So it'll be out like this, but I'm gonna sew it under the binding. And then when I flip it to sew it to the other side, I will flip this out like that. And then it will get sewn in the proper position. And then after that, I will hand sew my little button on I haven't decided which one yet so that's what I'm going to do next is is uh decide on my binding and I'm just going to do a one fold a single fold binding so just I'm cutting it an inch and a quarter wide I am finding more and more that projects 
that are very wabi-sabi or imperfect or quite obviously hand-sewn are much more satisfying and much more attractive aesthetically than precision piecing and precision stitching. Oh, I just love it. Anyway, I have gotten the cover done. Added a little vintage shank button and the binding is on. And I just did some zigzag all around. Added my little loop, ribbon loop. Oh, it's just so cute. I went with white because I thought it was a good contrast with uh, the rest of the, the greens and the little touches of pink here and there. Okay, so cover's done. Now we need to move on to the felt insert. Isn't that just adorable? must say I am in love I absolutely am in love with this it was a very emotional process it's one of those projects that you get really excited about and the ideas are just flowing and you can't stop and you don't even eat <laughs> So that's, that's uh, what has happened to me. Okay, so here's the front, the little cute pin, all the fun decorations, the little vintage shank button and other vintage buttons. And then we have this little cute guy, so many places for pins and needles. And then it's just all pockets. This I thought would be really cute to put your little thimble in there. And then this is great for the for your little clips or pins. Here's another pocket and here's another pocket. 
great for your snips. Or I was thinking too, uh, thread. It's a great place to put thread, these two pockets. And then I decided to add in my, a little portion of my snippet roll that I did on video not too long ago. And that's a pocket too, because why not? Really cool vintage ribbon there. And then another double pocket and another double pocket with another great spot for pins and needles. And then the back. The spine I did twice just to make sure, as you can see. Oh, it's so, so cute. So I wanted to let you all know that I have decided to have this be one of my regular things that I offer in my shop. I, of this quilted uh, patchwork scraps that I have, I have enough to make three more of these, but I'm going to have to uh, spend some time on them because I probably should eat and do other things. <laughs> oh boy. So I'm going to wait to put this one in my shop until the other three are done. And then I might do an additional bonus video to do a flip through for the other ones too, before I um, offer them for purchase. But this is definitely a really good transitional project for those who do like to do junk journals and sewing and quilting because it covers all, I mean, quilting, fabric collage, hand sewing, journals. I mean, this is basically a journal with, with one signature. So it's, it's for me an exciting project because it, it, oh, and upcycled too. It's, it repurposes items. So all the things that I love to do all in one project. So this is something I'm going to be doing a lot of. So please uh, look for that video, hopefully next week, where I can show you all four of my needle books. I hope I've inspired you to be super creative with your own needle book and use up some of your scraps or maybe a project of yours that you never finished. You can use it uh, to make a needle book. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. Next week, we'll be back on track for the reorg series as well as another scrappy project. I'm going to be getting a little bit bigger in my projects now um, because we'll be tackling more of my huger uh, stashes of fabric. So not only will we be doing maybe a bit bigger projects, maybe even a quilt or two, but also I will be back offering some of my items um, to de-stash on eBay. So look for that as well. As usual, all my links are below. Please subscribe, comment, or like. I will see you in the next video.